Hello everyone and welcome again to another episode of the Quill Review. This is the second episode and it's going to be about men's perfumes. Now, uh, like last time, uh, basically this is a, a, a program about uh, reviewing uh, experiences from a non-expert point of view, but from the point of view of people who really care about consciousness and, and their own experiences and in that sense they have skin in the game except it's uh, definitely not 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 expert of any sort um, today we're gonna talk about like men's perfumes uh, like last time you can basically talk about it in a number of ways uh, three important categories is kind of the, the qualia of it right it's like I think that's like to a large extent the, the least talk about <laughs> you know, trying to actually describe what it is you know it feels like of course we're also going to touch upon like things such as personal fit like basically uh, what kind of person would find it comfortable to wear this perfume uh, and yeah, then like uh, social signaling as well like what kind of uh, uses you might have uh, for this perfume um, at the same time uh, we're going to kind of discuss this a, a little bit as well in terms of uh, um, kind of art you know perfume have uh, a lot of potential when it comes to being part of art but i don't mean art in kind of the narrow sense that uh the word is used uh, of uh, nowadays i'm talking about art in the most expansive way possible and in that sense i might be kind of like touching upon some of the models of art uh that we discussed in this article called harmonic society uh which was uh, printed in a art magazine uh in berlin called art against art and just to <coughs> bless you <laughs> bless you <laughs> Just to very briefly kind of like touch upon the various models of art, uh, basically is art as semantic deflation, kind of pushing the boundary of what it means for something to be art. Of course, art is like sexual conquest, basically. <coughs> um, bless you. <laughs> um, hope, I mean, yeah, there might be like allergies to some of the perfumes we have here. <laughs> we'll see. We'll get through it. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Then art is like shelling point creation, uh, basically the creation of particular um, new social contexts from scratch using using particular artistic expressions. In this case, maybe sense. Um, then like sacredness, uh, art is kind of the exploration of the sacred. And the last four are basically exploring the state space of consciousness. We'll touch a little bit about what that means. Um, art is like modulating the energy parameter, basically how intense or the volume knob of your experience. Uh, and then also, you know, like valence, valence effects, kind of like art is producing pleasure in unusual and unexpected ways, which can be pretty, pretty interesting and, and fascinating. Uh, and concluding with uh, harmonic society, which is kind of this grand vision of how different types of art could actually communicate with each other and using qualia as their common currency. But anyway, that's still very much of a sci-fi kind of a vision, but... Um, we will get started. So this time we're going to do it randomly. There's basically three, I mean four, categories uh, of scents uh, of perfumes that we're going to review. There are the bad ones, just like terrible perfumes. Uh, there's like three, three of, for each category. Uh, I mean, I recognize, you know, it's, it's subjective. Uh, but, um, but, you know, one of the rules of this uh, program <laughs> is just being entirely candid and honest about this. So... Second category is just unusual perfumes that maybe have like something interesting about them, um, quillia wise or social signaling wise, and we'll we'll discuss it. Uh, then perfumes neither of us have smelled, basically just completely new. Let's see first impressions. And finally, three perfumes that I'm a huge huge fan of that I really 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 like, um, and hopefully I can communicate my enthusiasm about them. Um, all right, so we'll start randomly all right. with. We will start with oops, this one. This one. All right, it's Calvin Klein 2. Right. Calvin Klein 2. All right. Uh, that is uh, the one over here. Calvin Klein 2. And uh, let's see what it smells like. So that's here. Thank you. Ooh, it's uh, it's pretty light to me, a little bit oceany, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm. I guess it just has like the men's perfume, like the mm. men's. 
clones. The men, men I don't, clones. I don't know what that is, but... My, my, uh... I mean, definitely first impression is, like, there's something citrus in, mm. in here. And in that sense, um, that may, like, overwhelm the first impression of it. But uh, personally, I actually find uh, this quite a, an unusual perfume. Mm. Uh, it's in the category of, like, strange perfumes. And uh, one of the things that make it so strange is that it has a lot of kind of ineffable qualia that is not common in perfumes. In particular, it has a lot of, like, mineral notes. Mm. Um, some people even like describe it as kind of a uh, rocks or like wet rocks or something mm. like that. Somebody uh, in Fragrantica also talked about it in terms of a uh, very hard to describe sense like the, the smell of a freshly uh, printed photocopy or something like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, honestly, like there's kind of that oil you use to clean um, like what is it like like circuits? I think there's like mm. a special type of like oil. I see. And to me, that smells like that. It's like mineral oil. Not it's not like an animal type. It's like this kind of very, I don't know, mineral oil. Hmm. Uh, and I actually have like a, a picture prepared for like for it. Interesting. Uh, which is from here. Uh, don't sue me, please. But okay, this is a <laughs> book about patterns, and I think Calvin Klein number two. I would kind of seen aesthetically to some extent associated with kind of this this type of uh, texture and. And environment and feeling. Uh, the last thing I'm gonna say about Calvin Klein uh, too is that it's very much one of those kind of uh, things that <laughs> basically just like raise the energy parameter of your experience. Um, seem, I mean basically by generating like prediction errors. It's kind of like you know you go to a job interview and somebody's you know dressed like this holding this thing. It's like you know it it may not be like particularly unpleasant but it will be energizing and it's 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 puzzling because you have to sort of accommodate for your you your you didn't expect it to be like this right exactly exactly you you just have to kind of like deal with it somehow and i think like calvin klein number 2 as well is something that i could imagine like if your parents wear it let's say your dad wears it or something like that when you were a child i could imagine just like going through all of childhood without ever realizing that it was a perfume. But that was just like, you know, that's just kind of like how your car smells or how, huh. like something, yeah, something like synthetic, not unpleasant, but something about the environment more than like, mm. oh my God, somebody's wearing something. Mm. Um, assuming, you know, they, they don't see you spray it or, or they don't smell like the first two minutes where like just the citrusy is the overwhelming part. But uh, yeah. Anyway, what? Um, any additional comments on your end? Um, yeah, I guess. I guess. Uh, yeah, I don't. I can kind of see why people describe it as minerally, but I guess I'm not. I'm not really getting on <laughs> too many of the other things. All right. <laughs> uh, I can give you the Fragrantica. Yes. Which is um, main notes are pebbles, violet leaf, and wasabi. Pebbles, violet leaf, and wasabi. Yeah, that's. Kind of a unusual, unusual, interesting combination. Interesting combination for sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Thank you very much. All right. My allergies are uh, oh, getting no. bad. I'm gonna be right back. See. Uh. Yeah. Well, in the meantime. Uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully, this doesn't kill us. You know, it's one of the things about like doing quality reviews. There's like some kind of occupational hazards about it. Basically, you're just exposed to all of these like novel qualia. You never know what the side effects of novel qualia may be. And I think like that's uh, definitely something to keep in mind if you're interested in kind of uh, joining this as, as your career. All right. All right. Um, all right. Next one. Fragrance number two. Fragrance number two. We will choose... Uh... Pasha. Pasha. Oh gosh. Okay. So, <clears throat> Pasha. Um, let's bring this here. Yeah. Ba basically, Pasha by Cartier. If you remember from Qualia review episode one, uh, I really have a beef with Cartier. Uh, it's uh, one of those. Like honestly, I was like just so so disappointed with like Lavender um, mm. that it tells. <clears throat> You described it as nauseating, yeah, right, and and I describe it as like somebody who doesn't contribute at work who is aiming for a promotion. It has like that type of feeling to it. Uh oh, okay. And <laughs> and, uh, and more so, it's a fragrance 
um, built around gardenia, which is, in my book, the worst flower. And of course, you know, if you build it around that, like, you know, what, but that, that said, it's, it's primarily a high entropy perfume, very hard to, to describe. And, um, well, let's see Pasha. This okay. is kind of a, for men. Oh, this smells a lot like, um, <clears throat> excuse me, some of like the spray, like Axe or Old Spice kind of stuff. Okay. Spray, Old Spice. Um, it is kind of like, like menthol -y, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and maybe a little woodsy to me. But yeah. It's not bad. I like it. Huh. No, I think, I think, I think, uh, yeah, definitely like, it's a kind of like a, a mint, uh, mint spicy, maybe. Mm -hmm. I, Ice spicy. Ice and spicy. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And very fresh, uh, but it does have like some interesting spices in there. Hmm. Um, I mean, when it comes to like describing it in terms of like qualia, I would say it is one of those that are kind of like multiphasic. And by that, I mean that um, it kind of like toggles between different per like particular types of color varieties, like qualia. So like it toggles for me between like minty uh, and spicy and then maybe kind of a spicy woody. Hmm. And it just doesn't quite settle. It has a little bit of a treble in, in between those. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not a per particular fan. Um, it's not terrible. Uh, I would give it a... Uh, well, let's see what Fragrantica says. Fragrantica yeah. says, Fragrantica says uh, main notes are citruses, cedar, and amber. Citruses, cedar, and amber. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty pretty. Is that what that is? That's pretty generic. The cedar How about like scent? one of the few other other notes? Uh, mint and watery notes. Okay, okay, <clears throat> mint and watery notes. Yep, yep. Yeah, uh, I would give it four bottles of perfume out of ten. Okay, I think I would give it seven. Seven. Pretty solid. Five. Okay, pretty solid. Oh, and I guess we forgot uh, give uh, giving it to the uh, CK two. What was your score? Uh, probably another seven. Okay, for me too, like seven out of 10. Okay. All right, Very number nice. three. Number three is Virtu. <clears throat> oh, Virtu, okay. All right. Ooh. <laughs> There's... <laughs> It's like it's like when you step into like a like a furniture store or like a carpet store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's very there's a lot of like like it's wood woody or like clothy or something. Woody clothy, but like but like old. Maybe it's like minerally. But I can't smell anything after like the f first scent. But like. Virtu. Mm. Is it like, is that musk? What is that? Virtu, I would say is like a very like low frequency when it comes to like the type of scent sure. that yep. it's combining. It's very, uh, very woody for sure. It's very low and not like bright. Yeah, not bright, um, not flowery or anything like that. It Maybe a little bit spicy. It's like spicy and woody. Mm. Uh, but it's all low, low notes. Um, so it's kind of like varieties of, of wood. To me, it also is a little bit multifacic. It evolves uh, over the course of a couple seconds, hmm. but uh, I don't particularly like it. Uh, yeah, what's your what's your rating? Oh, my rating would be something like three bottles of perfume. Okay, of, yeah, um, I would give it a four. A this four. Virtue yeah. Vince Camuto. Uh, top yeah. Notes are cedar, leather, and sandalwood. Okay. But and then fourth is Haitian vetiver. Oh, Haitian vetiver. All right. Yeah, that. all of those are like kind of like yeah, very low, very mm -hmm. low notes, and uh, and an, an association for sure is like one of the cheapest perfumes that I ever bought. Like when I was a teenager, it was like three, uh, thirty pesos. So like that must have been like is that like a dollar uh -huh. and a half. Uh, definitely, I don't like, know, like, like for a, like a knockoff. Yeah, like good, something good. that like pretended to be fancy, but like. It, it just like smelled super cheap and like very much just kind of like a furniture store. Oh. <laughs> and this is what reminds me of um, this perfume. Um, and actually also is one of the cases where, you know, I mean, opinions about smells are correlated. Obviously they're not like, there's not a one-to-one -one relationship in how people describe the valence of it. Um, and the correlation is not, you know, is not insanely high, but 
there is an um, agreement at times between a lot of people. And uh, Virtu in Fragrantica is uh, very much disliked. Wow. And I think uh, for a good reason. I think like its score is actually 2.7 out of 5. Um, and just like the biggest category of <laughs> comment is uh, dislike. <laughs> like, you know, more people dislike it than they like it. Huh. Um, which uh, is, yeah, quite interesting. You do, of course, like find uh, some like diehards yeah, in, the, in the comment section, but oh my gosh. There's not a ton of votes though, but that, yeah, that, that's right. Um, but yeah, pretty terrible in my opinion. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Next one is 21 Le Fou. 21 Le Fou by uh, Dolce and Gabbana, yep. I believe. Uh, so this one is, I think, quite lovely. I, I really, really liked it. Um, <laughs> it's one of the ones I ca would categorize as kind of like one of my all-time favorites so far. Again, I'm uh, relatively, <laughs> relatively new in this area. Let's see. So it has a lot of those like sort of higher um, higher notes to me, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it doesn't, it's like more sophisticated than like an ax smell. And maybe that's just cause there's more like wood smell and less, less powerful. Like, I don't know. It is, I think it's very well blended. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like. It does. It does come across as like very high entropy. It's very hard to actually like tell apart individual notes of mm -hmm. it, but it creates kind of like this very nice rounded smell. Uh, I would say in the kind of um, upper levels of, of the heart frequencies, uh, meaning like it's a relatively high frequency but high entropy as well. Uh, it's not as high frequency as like citrus, for example. It's like sure. a little bit below that, but it's a uh, yeah quite nice. I think uh, the other the other property of it is that um, it's it's one that it actually feels like it's kind of a subcomponent of other perfumes that are more sophisticated like one that it reminded me of was a uh, thing like Burberry Brit uh, for men uh, which we're not gonna be reviewing but that one smells like this one plus some spices hmm. and in a sense, when I smelled that one, actually what I enjoyed was kind of the undertone, not so much the spices they added. <laughs> and uh, I think, like, yeah, Tony Wan Le Fu has that. Uh, and I guess, like, something oh, finally to say is that, yeah, from a game theoretical point of view, this might be a pretty bad choice to, like, if you want to go on, on a club or something like that, because other perfumes already included. Hmm. So you will actually smell uh, more like other perfumes. This is just going to be in the background. Hmm. But if you're wearing it, you know, just for hedonics for yourself to like enjoy enjoy the day, I think like that's that's a pretty good choice. Hmm. I guess one thing I noticed with the few we've tried so far is that like all of these are very uh, none of these are like distinct notes of anything, mm -hmm. right? Whereas mm -hmm. like a lot of the women's perfumes were distinct notes of like floral or mm -hmm. something, right? Mm -hmm. Which is which is yeah, a so difference far. so far. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, I guess like you could describe that as like so far. The average entropy mm -hmm. of the men's perfumes seem to be higher yeah. than women's perfumes, and I think that's that's true. Yeah, that does seem to be pretty accurate. Cool rating. Oh yeah, uh, seven bottles of perfume out of ten. Yeah, seven for me as well. Okay, cool. <coughs> and uh, what are the the main notes the according notes to fragrance? Are Fragrantica? juniper berries, fern, and cognac, with cognac ginger behind it. Cognac, interesting. And uh, fern, fern. And I get like juniper berries, so it's kind of like a something that is kind of a uh, gin and cognac and cognac ferns and ferns. You add some gin and cognac and ferns. Well, this, sounds, <laughs> that, <laughs> this sounds like the worst cocktail. I think I think we have a new cocktail, oh. and uh, it could be called Twenty One Le Fou or something like that. <laughs> Next Dr beer, we'll we'll drink that. <laughs> Guys, don't don't drink your perfumes. Uh, don't add them to drinks. Okay, but Important. perfume inspired drinks. Perfume inspired drinks. Items. Yeah, I'm I'm not, <laughs> I'm not confident in the success of that experiment, but for science, you know, uh, we can surely try. All, all right, right all right, all right. Next we have. Le mail. Le, Le Mail. Le, Le Mail. 
Le Mail by Jean Paul Gaultier, okay. I believe. So, this is one of the uh, three perfumes that um, none of us have actually tried. Okay. So, these are going to be just like very honest first impressions. And I think this is it. I think this is a very popular one, actually. Like, I see it all the time in airports and places like that. Um, and I know that the Ultra Male, which is a flanker of this one, uh, is one of the absolute like top rated ones in Fragrantica. Uh, and I'm pretty interested in smelling that one uh, because of its notes. But okay. let's see what uh, this smells like. All right. How are you going? Yeah, that's just okay. a. That was a little spray. All right. All right. Just rub it. Uh, just, just like that. Okay. Just give it a, a couple of 10 seconds or so. All right. It's already smelling interesting. Yeah, you can smell it from here. That's uh, also. I'm pretty sure I was allergic to the Calvin Klein one, the first one. Oh, none of these other ones interesting, are, interesting. Like, causing me to to get all congested like that one did. Yeah, sorry about that. That is okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. So Calvin Klein number two is uh, maybe has allergens for for I'm you. I'm allergic to it. All right. Yeah, it, it's smelling pretty. Hmm. Very mm. interesting. It's it's like some sort of like powdery kind of smell it's it's very uniform um mm. it doesn't feel like there's extra smells oh it's kind of like f food there's some food hmm to me it's like chocolatey or like hairspray interesting <laughs> chocolatey yeah oh my gosh chocolate hairspray uh minty to me a little bit of strawberry okay but I, but i like it it like those descriptions don't make it sound no 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 uh, yeah, strawberry, maybe. I suspect it might have a little bit of cinnamon, too. Okay. That's my, my suspicion so far. Interesting. Maybe not. Maybe not cinnamon. No, no, no something else. Cardamom. Maybe it has cardamom. Um, oh, it smells uh, like, like a soda fountain? Like mm. a soda machine? Root beer. Root beer? Root beer. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is definitely in the upper frequencies. Uh, not, not, sorry, not the upper, but like upper for like a men, men perfume. Mm -hmm. It's definitely on the higher end. Uh, which one we were... Oh, the Fu is a little bit higher still than this one. This is a little bit like lower in its okay. overall frequency. But it's, yeah, it yeah. feels like high entropy. Okay, yeah. Let's, uh, let's see what uh, Fragrantica says right. it has. Uh, it says vanilla, vanilla. lavender, okay. mint. Lavender, mint. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, okay. It also has tons of ratings, so... Yeah, nice. Yeah, I can Probably see. a super hugely popular one. Yep. But it, it's nice. Okay, so like vanilla, lavender... Mm. I guess we 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 got yeah, uh, mint it, and cinnamon. Yeah, we need to have a little bit of cinnamon. I can't smell the lavender. Is that what said root beer? <laughs> lavender. It's a good question. And vanilla. Know. Oh yeah, vanilla for sure. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hot. Yep. Huh. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Seven out of ten for me. Maybe a little more. Cool. I'll give it a. I'll give it like seven out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Very good. Very good. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Next is the Light Essence Bright. Light Essence Bright. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Light Essence Bright is actually pretty, uh, pretty fresh. I really like it. Uh, Light Essence. So what I really like about this perfume is that uh, it feels like it has like two peaks in kind of its spectral decomposition, if we were to kind of describe it into its like particular felt senses of, of frequency. And they're very harmonious with each other, in my, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I just got a whiff of the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> people, people describe it as like a, a, one of the most like feminine, I guess, feminine male perfumes by Ferrari. And uh, it, it it is it could it could be worn by a girl I think it's probably like pretty unisex. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean everything can be worn by every, everybody, but like in a sense of kind of a people like really resonating with it. Okay, like who who is the best fit for it? Yeah, it smells to me very like aquatic, sort of like um, like the ocean sea spray notes. I guess stand out to me. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very sweet. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. one thing that maybe also distinguishes it from some of the aqua aquatic, I mean, it definitely is like aquatic. Mm -hmm. There's like many aquatic ones that are like kind of salty, hmm. have like a kind of like salty character, like uh, like Nautica or, or like, there's like a, a bunch of them basically, okay. but 
But this one is kind of like aquatic, but sweet. Hmm. And uh, two notes that stand out to me is pear. And actually maybe like white pear. Hmm. Like I remember like a shampoo once was like white pear. And it smells a little bit different than just like pear, but like white pear and hmm. peach. I think those are like kind of two, two stronger notes from these. This feels like you uh, looked this up beforehand because the top notes here are peach. And I think pear. it's very, very likely. It's yes. Uh, I'm not. Yeah. Maybe maybe peach is some is kind of top down. I'm I'm pretty sure I can tell uh, pear. And green tea is the next one. And that maybe green I tea. Guess that a bit more. Hmm. But yeah, top down. You mean like you think it smells like peach, so it maybe, smells maybe, like yeah, peach yeah. to you. But definitely pear. Like okay. pear, I think like. Something I, like when I put it on, like for the first time, mm. I definitely detected pear, and uh, but but yeah, it feels like almost kind of the peach maybe is like the highest frequency here, mm. and then like the pear is like one octave below, <laughs> and I don't know if kind of like you know, um, you know if there's like a true analogy between like you know sound spectrum and the way they harmonize versus you know the spectrum of the frequencies of, of smells, but. If anything, it feels like this might be an example of like good harmonization mm. between elements of different frequencies. Yeah, that so. one's really nice. Excellent. Cool. <laughs> uh, I would give it 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Yeah, yeah, me too. 8 out of 10. All right. How are you uh, recovering from the allergy? Yeah, I guess that is like very clear now which one I was allergic to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, compare with the Jimmy Choo Blue. Jimmy Choo Blue. All right. So that's another one we haven't tried. Okay. So your turn this time. I'll just put it put it on. So. All right. So this is Jimmy Choo Bleu. Is that the correct? Uh, okay. Yeah. I haven't even read the description. So. Huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm just like learning actually what it means for perfume to be bleu. <laughs> <laughs> because there's there's definitely a few that like say blue or like uh, flankers that are kind of blue. Hmm. Is that blue? Uh, this also has that chapstick smell. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like to me. Interesting. Um, but it's like better this time. Okay, by invitation of Michael Bublé is the one you you were okay. saying it's a uh, the chapstick. Chapstick, unscented chapstick. So kind of like yeah. greasy, I guess. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think maybe it does have. I, I don't know. I'm, oh, yeah, like kind of like Crayola a little bit. <laughs> like waxy. <laughs> like waxy Crayola. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it, this one's better than the other one, I think. Yeah. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Definitely. I mean, Michael Bublé, the, by yeah, invitation, just yeah. like definitely, definitely outside of uh, the range of acceptability. Uh, but this one, you know, it reminds me of our other aquatic uh, scents. Hmm. Like... Nautica Blue. Nautica Blue, actually, I guess, like, it's their version of it. But it's, like, very aquatic. Um, kind of a... Even a little bit, like, salty, actually. Hmm. It's maybe, maybe a little bit like what I was uh, talking about. Uh, huh. It's not, like, super sweet. I uh, think it may be aquatic notes of, like, top down, but... Okay. Not, not bottom up? Not, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Oh, maybe a little bit of a... Tiny bit of pineapple, maybe. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's see. Uh, yeah, for sure, I have not seen like the, the notes of these are lavender, vanilla, and ambergris. Lavender, vanilla, and ambergris. And then leather underneath that. Interesting. Is ambergris the chapstick smell? It's a great question. Uh, huh. But uh, it doesn't say, it doesn't have any like aquatic notes Okay. after this. This is leather, sandalwood, black pepper. It does have a uh, does have pineapple, but like way way below, yeah. like fifteen people yeah, saying yeah. pineapple, and it has a bergamot. Oh yeah, Ber yeah yeah. Uh, but yeah, interesting. So I guess like lavender and vanilla, maybe that's like the the main thing, hmm. and like I, I guess like I mean it's the first time I guess like I experienced kind of that combination, hmm. um, but it seems like both these and this. So Jimmy Choo Man Blue and John Paul Gautier. Le Mail are both lavender, hmm. vanilla based. Interesting. They smell pretty different from each other. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Also, this one is like very, very strong in the in the air, oh. which is why I'm holding my hand. Yeah. <laughs> this. 
but anyway. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. So I would give I would give that maybe a six out of ten. Six out of ten. Yeah, well, I would I would give it a six out of ten actually. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess like lavender vanilla, hmm. some a new frontier to explore. I guess it, it does maybe produce like an interesting um, non-linear effect when mm-hmm. you combine them, mm-hmm. because I don't know. Investigation to follow. Investigation to follow. Another, I guess you can make water like that. There's not really cocktails. Oh, there. vanilla lavender. Yeah. Yeah. And it's you know, like lavender is pretty like narcotic. It's like pretty pretty like calming, hmm. and uh, vanilla is also kind of like pretty creamy. Uh, but I I don't know I never thought of like combining them hmm. interesting hmm. but I guess it's a trend yes I maybe mean, it's just alright next we next. have one million one million okay so this is an extremely popular fragrance okay. and uh, I would definitely also like yeah read the Fragrantica uh, entry but when I when I tried it uh, I do remember hmm. feeling like okay it had like a very strong spice component this is another Paco Rabanne, or could be. Oh, back to Paco Rabanne. What is the other one that we got from? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. I guess we'll find out. All right. So one million. Hmm. This one's a little bit more like higher pitched, sort of like a more like axe deodorant. What, <laughs> what is? I got. We got to get a better. It's like it's like fancy axe is not. Uh, thing I think people would be too proud to uh fancy hear. X um but no it's it's nice okay and the I guess the base note is more like woody but like high pushed high pitched wood high pitched wood hmm. okay high pitched wood but high pitch nice. high pitched wood high peach wood is a good description I think hmm. um and uh there's definitely to me it's just like also it's just super strong like spice almost kind of like honey with spices hmm. and uh, from the point of view of kind of like art I, it, it does seem to, to to me this one is like pretty special kind of because from a game theoretical point of view it's a very powerful move uh, maybe there's a way of counterbalance it but like basically it has a certain quality to it that if you know 20 people are wearing different perfumes and you're wearing these uh, you will be the most not- notable somehow uh, it does seem to have like its own kind of character. It's not a particularly amazing character, in my opinion, but it is very recognizable. Mm. Um, and uh, <laughs> and people complain nowadays that uh, nightclubs just like smell like one million mm. uh, all the time. And I, I I could actually imagine that. I think I think that's pretty plausible. Sure. I I I don't say it, I don't know that I've smelled a nightclub that smelled like this. Like this isn't okay. bringing back any memories mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. course all of the nightclubs I go to um, but but I mean yeah it's it's nice I was actually gonna give it an 8 out of 10 8 out of 10 yeah. wow okay I I think my personal would be something like 5 out of 10 okay it's not super exciting I, I will grant you that mm-hmm. um, but the top notes are uh, cinnamon leather amber with rose underneath cinnamon leather, leather amber, amber rose. and rose Cool. But cool, overall, cool. I, overall, I like it, but it's not super interesting. So, all, all right. right. Next is terror. All right. So this one also terror. never never tried before. Right. I guess it's also kind of a a test. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right. All right. This is. This one has a bunch of reviews. Hmm. Oh. Huh. Hmm. This is this is a very particular. Hmm. This is this is what I smell when I walk past perfume. Uh, perfume counters in department stores. Hmm. It uh. It reminds this me is... definitely of kind of like some old perfume. Like I almost kind of kind of like have this vivid memory of being probably like five or six mm-hmm. and just like looking through my parents like perfume stock and probably just like spray it <laughs> i'm sure i'm sure i'm sure um uh, and i think this was kind of the style of those okay yeah um 
I don't know. I associate it with the '90s. Oh, what is this? I guess for that reason. There's like some some particular chemical smell that isn't. It's not the same as a chapstick smell, but it's not super far off from that either. Um, I mean, I wonder. It's very particular, but I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I can't place it. Yeah, it's very hard to place. I mean, I, I, okay, I, definitely it has like a lot of like wood components. Okay. Uh, almost kind of like whiskey notes. Hmm. I feel um, sandalwood, cedar wood. Oh yeah, yeah. There is there is like specific. Yeah, it smells like some specific wood. Yeah, yeah. yeah it seems Maybe like they. Sandalwood. There's probably like a very specific wood with a very characteristic smell, and this one is like centered around it. Yeah, and it smells like, like, you can smell like the sawdust in the air after you like, woodwork, which is not after you woodwork. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you know, know every Saturday. You know that smell when you go woodworking. Yeah. Also, it probably has like some citrus, I think. Uh, if anything, like it might be something like orange or... Or pomelo? I don't know. All right. I don't know. I like it. I like it. Yeah. I would give it like a six. Six? Okay. It was, I was going to give it lower, but it, it became better over time, I think. Okay. Yeah, I think I think a six. Six out of ten. Okay. Oh, it almost was a tiny bit of like cola, like a Coca-Cola hmm. to me, a little bit. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Cola so nut. Says orange. Orange. Vetiver. Vetiver. Again. Pepper and grapefruit. Maybe the pepper, pepper is like the cola. And grapefruit. Interesting. Vetiver. Um, I wonder if is the wood. Vetiver. Oh, vetiver. That was the yeah, other yeah. thing too, right? Uh, I mean, I guess like, that's like very earthy. Mm-hmm. Earthy. And uh, what is that a picture of? It looks like a moss or something. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I think it's kind of like a grass. Okay. A type of grass. Okay. And uh, I was going to say it also like geosmine, but uh, I'm not sure if that how much like that's like top down. Geosmine is kind of this uh, compound of like... Um, what smell earth smells like just after rain hmm. i actually have a bottle of it uh but it's like just so potent that like it's under three levels of wraps because otherwise it just and it's like a, like a just, full full vial of like geos the entire but, yeah <laughs> a drop which is like will make the apartment smell like it for weeks and weeks I so see. very nice cool excellent next one next one all right so all right three more three more we're getting close and right. hopefully <laughs> none of them <laughs> spark your allergies yep uh, next is Invictus. Invictus! Okay. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> Invictus. Yeah. Actually, I do have some complaints about these perfumes. Oh, this is the other Paco Rabanne. Oh, the... Okay. This is the one more. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Hmm. It had Ocean Sense at first, but... It it has a little bit of like the, the like sort of cologne scent, but it's relatively high frequency. Um, maybe it's like a little bit fruity, a little bit ocean, a little bit powdery. Hmm. It's not super strong for me. <laughs> I, I definitely concur, like, high frequency mm-hmm. uh, for, for uh, socially speaking, it makes me think of, like, a metrosexuality. Okay. Um, I mean, nothing wrong with being metrosexual, but, like, it's another kind of like... 90s. Another 90s. 2000s word. word. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like a, a straight guy, but he's um, very, very flamboyant. He takes care of himself. Takes care of himself. Was, yeah. was that the point of metrosexual? Uh, well, was that when like people were like losing their minds because men were getting like manicures and stuff? Yeah, 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 exactly. That was the thing. Yeah, I guess people were losing. Yeah, I guess like two thousands yeah. was was a different time. Metrosexual. <laughs> metrosexual. Was that because like it was like the city, like the metropolis? Yes, yes, area? exactly. It was like the, the the man of the metropolis. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so. Uh, this one to me actually symbolizes a little bit kind of the exploration of the state space of consciousness. And, you know, you're wondering maybe why am I wearing this uh, like weird shirt, which is the state space of possible two dimensional symmetries, the ways you can tile uh, a space using symmetry elements like rotations and reflections and glide symmetries and so on. 
<laughs> also, this uh, necklace, you know, it's kind of a, a it's, it's a rainbow, which uh, of course is an allusion to uh, Rainbow God, which is kind of the entity that explores the entire state space of consciousness. And um, because rainbows haven't been used for like any other, of course not, of course any other purpose. Um, but yeah, kind of like these two are kind of like part of the same aesthetic in the sense of hey, like maybe there are gems in the state space of consciousness to be found. Um, but uh, I also think it's important to explore it in an intelligent way, not just throw things kind of like randomly together. And, and to, to that extent, I would say Invictus is maybe kind of a failed attempt at mm. exploring the state space of consciousness because one of the things that also come up when I smell it is um, something you might cook with, uh, which is fine, it's interesting, uh, but it's not mind-blowing it's a little bit distracting almost i think um it's kind of like somebody is like right next to a huge amount of like um kind of a, a huge soup uh made with leaves of certain types and um and the, the person is also wearing a perfume but the, kind of like the overall just out of it to me is very much of a kitchen hmm. interesting yeah i would give it like a <laughs> Maybe like a six out of ten. Six yeah, out I just of didn't ten? get the smell very much. Okay, but, um... I would give it a, a four out of ten. Okay, it just. Uh, I mean, I guess like the spirit of like trying something very new. It's cool. Sure. But uh, and notes are C notes, grapefruit, C notes, grapefruit, bay leaf, bay leaf, and mandarin orange. And mandarin orange. All right. Oh yeah, the other thing. Uh, I mean, this might be like also top down, but like it makes me think of a uh, kind of like an old. Roman um, uh, sauna. Hmm. Um, yeah. All right. Have you? Wh why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. the type of person who would wear it. I, I see. Old Romans in there. Well, and of course it's top down because Invictus it probably is like yeah. Okay. Oh well. Oh well. Fair enough. All right. Next one is essential. Essential by uh, Lacoste. All right. Yeah, I saw that. And, uh, you know, I sure, why not have a cologne brand, Lacoste, I guess. So, All actually, right. this one has a lot of personal meaning to me. Oh, hang on, I think I got too much, uh, Okay, 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 okay. Because, um... Oh, it's just what it smells like. It's one of the very few perfumes that, uh, I actually bought when I was, like, uh, 16 or so. And, um, this one I, I took to, like, Norway when I studied, uh, uh, like, the IB, uh, at the Norwegian the Red Cruz Nordic um, United World College. And uh, for the first, you know, like maybe a couple months, I would like spray these on a couple times. Um, and uh, I think it just created a super strong association. Yeah. Now, the smell itself, it's very like, there's some specific like woody scent. This is like an ax smell. It's, so, okay. But it's like cedar, the cedar ax smell. Cedar. Something like that. Yeah, there's something very kind of forest, foresty mm -hmm. yeah. about it. but. Foresty, not woody, right? Yeah, foresty, not woody, it's exactly. Like maybe, maybe that's like pine. Does that mean pine? pine? Maybe. And uh, it also, why like, it makes me think of like elves, kind of like elvish. It's kind of like forest, but it's not like druids. It's not kind of these like very old creatures like made of wood. Uh, it's more kind of like, like elves. It's higher uh, frequency? Yeah, definitely higher frequency. I would maybe kind of teenager-like smell. Okay. Uh, definitely like combines like some citruses, um, like... Like uh, orange, maybe like bergamot, um, uh, maybe... It's like a little bit of like lavender or something? Creamy? Maybe, maybe. Hmm. Is that vanilla? I don't I don't know. I wouldn't say it has vanilla, okay. but then again, I, I missed two vanillas okay. already, so... All right, I don't know. All right, let's see. Fragranticus uh, says... Fragranticus said, oh, also, I would give it a... I'd give it like a seven. Okay. Yeah, yeah, seven, me too. Seven seven point five. Yeah. Seven point five out of ten. Yeah. Uh, top notes are bergamot, cassia, cassia, tangerine, and tomato leaf. Tangerine. Okay, tangerine. Tomato leaf. Okay. Maybe it smells like tomato a little bit, but I don't know. Maybe if tomato. Yeah. Huh. None of those were like pine. like a salad or something. <clears throat> but yeah, no. Yeah, kind of like no uh, resinous, like no yeah. uh, pine or rosemary or anything like that. Interesting. But it still smells like a forest somehow. Yep. Great. All right, the last one. Last one. Okay, so right, we have Blue de Chanel. <laughs> Blue de Chanel. 
Uh, okay, I think this is unfortunately, and I'm actually pretty kind of like sad about this, is that I think it is my favorite scent so far, but it's like a very expensive like bottle and it's like very, I mean, it's like a very, very, you know, traditionally, I guess, luxury brand. Okay. And it's kind of sad that like some of the best scent qualia is kind of a... Uh, artificially expensive. Yeah, artificially expensive and withheld by, by them. But like... I was asking actually on, on Reddit if there's like other fragrances like it and apparently there's like a few that are like very similar hmm. so and they're like ten dollars the bottle rather than like whatever these costs right. which is a lot. Hmm. Hmm. I think this might be a little bit too alcohol. Oh so, yeah yeah. So maybe we'll, yeah we'll wait a little bit. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah I really like it. So uh, something really interesting here is um the creation of kind of like new uh, properties in sense that have a lot of like emotional character, uh, but in a very emergent way. So there's this concept uh, I, I describe as scent factorization, which is when a number of different scents have kind of the same special effect, uh, which is not a note in particular, it's kind of like an emotional effect that it has. Um, and uh, if there are like a, many different types of categories, if you blend them together, the categories kind of cancel each other out in kind of these Laurex or like approaching like maximum entropy kind of sense, but the special effect uh, will be amplified because every one of the cells, uh, sense that you include uh, has a special effect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have tried um, two things where it has worked. One was kind of trying to get maximum creaminess. So I detected like, hey, vanilla, coconut, uh, fig, um, sandalwood, all of our, all of those are like very creamy, and uh, but they're different categories. And if you blend them together, you actually get like a super creamy mixture, um, but it's not of any particular category. It's kind of across the spectrum, you get this strange creaminess. The other place where I've been able to kind of do this is with kind of this special effect of bitterness. Hmm. You see, it's kind of kind of like. Uh, right after the onset it comes and bites you and it's kind of a strange effect um and things that have kind of a bitterness include um grapefruit for sure bergamot or bergamot um uh and then like pomegranate uh which is kind of like outside uh of of, of the the space of like citruses but it's still kind of bitter for some re reason geranium geranium is kind of like the grapefruit of flowers completely completely interesting that a flower can smell that way hmm. uh, and then something like cedar wood which i would consider almost kind of the citrus of the woods hmm. and when you combine all of them you get a super bitter kind of sour bitter uh experience uh that crosses boundaries and categories now rue de chanel what uh, really surprised me is it's kind of like one level up because it's not only you know doing some scent factorization and creating like a very special uh, effect. It's more than that kind of doing some kind of alchemy where it's taking something that is traditionally bitter, uh, grapefruit, hmm. and making it <clears throat> extremely creamy somehow. Hmm. It's kind of like transforming <laughs> where it is. Um, so it's kind of like an extremely creamy grapefruit. I mean, it's kind hmm. of a maybe grapefruit mousse or something like that um, where, where you're like expecting kind of this uh, bitterness but then like it turns out it's a dessert and it's very sweet and very creamy somehow hmm. I guess I, I thought I can smell that now maybe more top down but I thought it was more like high entropy ocean high entropy first. ocean okay but but I think that smell is maybe like creamy grapefruit that you're talking about creamy grapefruit because it's grapefruit but then it doesn't finish like a grapefruit, it doesn't finish bitter. It yeah, finishes creamy. yeah, it's very strange. Hmm. Yeah, I'm. I, I really like it. I mean, I, I sometimes just like uh, put this on and like listen to songs and like nice. just like go very deep into like that particular state space. Nice. I mean, I, I do that with other like scents as well and essential oils, but mm -hmm. like, yeah, this one is. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty very very happily 
uh, impressed by it. Brainless. And I hate the fact <laughs> that it's so a expensive. luxury brand, it's inaccessible to most people, because oh, yeah. everybody... It's, it's your birthright to have every possible scent qualia. It's the birthright of every sentient being. <laughs> they should be able to experience any scent qualia whatsoever, no matter if you um, are born an amphibian, if you're born um, a DMT elf, it doesn't matter. You should be allowed to experience every scent qualia and you should be allowed to experience this scent qualia. That said, it is approximately seven cents per spray and you may be able to amortize it by like buying it with you know a group of friends or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, Cool. Cool. I would give it a seven <laughs> out of ten. I'll give it a nine out of ten. Great. <laughs> and yeah, uh, Graphica says uh, grapefruit, incense, ginger, Gra and lemon. Grapefruit, incense, ginger, and lemon. Ginger and lemon. Maybe maybe a couple more. Sure. Uh, and, uh, below is mint and vetiver again. Mint, vetiver, and pink pepper. And pink pe pepper. Hmm. So I guess it's also gingery. Yeah. Maybe gingery hmm. adds to the bitter, creamy bitterness. The hmm. incense. Interesting. I don't know. Yeah, really love it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's it. There we go. Right? Yep. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. And if you're still watching, I mean, you're, you're a pro. You're on the way of becoming a Quilia connoisseur. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, we uh, hope to see you uh, next episode, which is going to be about uh, probably uh, tactile textures. Hmm. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Infinite bliss.